Uh, hi there, it's Mark Owen Cooper at the National Rural Health Conference in Blenheim. Uh, today I have John McCaskill-Smith with me, who's from Pinnacle uh, Rural Health Network. How's it going? Very good. Very good. Very good. Cool. So I understand you're talking <coughs> later on this afternoon, and the main focus of the talk is going to be on healthcare homes, and, um, and I guess how we can go about changing the way that we perceive GP and how, how we go about integrating it more into the community. Yeah, look, that's absolutely it. Um, <clears throat> as you said, uh, we're a large rural GP network across the middle part of the North Island. And um, we did some modelling about six or seven years ago, and we kind of looked at demand and looked at our ability to uh, meet that demand in terms of workforce and what our workforce can do. And there was just a complete mis you know, disconnect. You know, Demand's going to outstrip our ability to supply by about 1.5 million consults a year. Right. And there's just not the docs coming through the program, you know, through the through the schools or whatever, or, or moving in or wanting to be in rural general practice. So, yeah, so we've spent quite a lot of time and a lot of effort consulting, looking globally, uh, and looking at how you can rebuild the model and reorganise primary care to operate a bit differently. Yeah. Uh, so do more with the same, um, but also integrate with other providers because I think you know general practice is often a little bit. <clears throat> A dock in a box in a room exactly. and it's a little bit hard to get the integration kind of going so it's a big part of the healthcare home yeah and you mentioned you know we're going to have the shortage of consults uh, main areas for that i'm guessing is going to be in older people's health <coughs> um your, your chronic comorbidities that side of things which is quite a, a high health usage area yeah look absolutely i mean what, what's interesting about where we are in new zealand is there's growth occurring um there's the the the, the kind of the drift north mm -hmm. um of populations and we're now starting to see the drift south out of auckland with particularly housing pri uh, prices so we've seen real growth occurring in a lot of our smaller rural communities in that northern corridor between hamilton uh, uh thames and um auckland mm -hmm. um and with that there's increased demand so we got early retirees, we've got young families looking for cheaper housing, you know, places like Pocono that didn't even really exist mm. a couple of years ago now. There's, you know, <clears throat> thousands of houses there and thousands more to be planned. So, um, uh, yeah, the demand's mixed, really. <laughs> yeah. And I've, I'm, I'm based in Invercargill, and even down <clears throat> there, the house prices are going up. Yeah. We're, we're getting the move to the far south as well. Yeah, that's right. Well, you've got Tim down there, sort yeah, of exactly. encouraging everyone to yeah. come south, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I guess what are, what are going to be the main takeaway points for your presentation later today? Well, look, what, what I'm really going to talk about is um, the fact that we've been doing this now for about eight years, and we've just recently had two massive evaluations by EY that have gone through and kind of said, well, you know, what's the impact of this? Um, what's happened as a result of reorganising the patient workflows? Um, you know, we do a lot of stuff on the phone. We've pushed health records out to patients and giving them the ability to email and um, talk um, electronically with their providers. Um, if people are wanting a same day appointment now, they need to talk to their doctor on the phone before mm -hmm. they're just given that. And yeah. about half the time we can, um, we end up uh, with them not needing to come in. We can deal with the issue over the phone, which saves them time and money, but sure. also means the practice has got more capacity yeah. to deal with the more complex stuff. Yeah. Um, so we're going to talk about, you know, what's the evaluation showing? So it's got some really interesting stats in it. So what they did was they took um, about 85,000 people that were in healthcare home sites and compared them to 85,000 people who were in non-healthcare home or more traditionally organised practices, high-performing practices, and said, well, what's the difference? Yeah. And so look, some big numbers. If you're in the healthcare home sites and you're over 65, there's a 32% less likelihood that you'll end up in ED than if you're in a traditionally organised practice. Now, 32% for that age group That's is fantastic, huge. Yeah. For Māori, there's a 25% less likelihood that you're going to end up with a, needing acute care with a hospital. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> we've sort of often faced a bit of criticism and the questioning we get around it is, oh, you know, because we started with some practices that we owned. And so people were saying, oh, well, it works in a salaried environment. It's not going to work in a traditionally owned practice. Oh, it's an urban model. You know, we, we did start initially in an urban practice, but the bulk of the practices that have now adopted it are rural and they're yeah. privately owned, um, and they're very high need. So communities like Tokoroa, where you've right. got 66% um, Māori Pacific Island populations, and these are the kind of outcomes that we're kind of getting for those communities. So, yeah, I'll be talking through 
what the evaluations really highlighted is the successes of the program. And I really want to do a bit of a myth buster kind of thing because there's a lot of GPs out there who think, oh, the healthcare home's not for me because it's only going to work in these kinds of environments. But our experience is actually there's something in it for everybody. And do you see scope for expansion throughout New Zealand? Yeah, so what's happened is we've actually established a uh, national healthcare home collaborative. So there's now a million New Zealanders who are receiving their care through practices that have gone through the healthcare home program. So of the 20 odd PHOs, 16 of them are now starting to adopt um, the healthcare home kind of framework. And we've also through that national body agreed a set of standards mm -hmm. so that we're not getting people sort of painting their waiting rooms and going, I'm a healthcare home. Yeah. They're actually having to go through a process that actually sees the uh, change required taking place. Yeah. So look, we think this is a real organic movement. It's not policy driven. It hasn't come from a politician, it hasn't come from the ministry, yeah. but it's starting to have real impact. So I guess at this time, we've got a health review going on. District health boards are sort of slowly sinking financially. Uh, we're sort of saying, well, this is a great alternative. This yeah. is about primary care stepping up. It's yeah. about community stepping up because a lot of it's also about integration in terms of how providers can work differently together. And it's about, um, I guess, the professions and patients driving change yeah. rather than politicians. Exactly. And, and you know, when, when stuff's coming from the bottom up, it's going to be better thought through and better organised than if it's a politician saying, hey, you need to do things like this. Oh, look, you know, the big thing is, you know, general practice and a lot of primary care or NGO organisations are small cash-based businesses. You know, politicians and bureaucrats don't work in small cash-based businesses, so often they make sweeping statements mm. or propose sweeping changes with no kind of forethought to the, the, the change that's required in a small business to get those workflows to take place. You know, screening's a good example. Someone's always got something else they want to add to the screening, and they'll often say, oh, look, it's only going to add a minute to the consult. Well, there's no minutes left in the consult. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> so you get all these non-patient agendas kind of sabotaging the issues that patients are really coming in with, which mm -hmm. is to deal with an actual health issue. And, you know, you've got screening. Now, there's a place for screening, but you've got to have different workflows to really support it well. Cool. Well, thank you for giving us a summary of, of that and um, I look forward to hearing about it in more detail later on today. No worries. And I'm sure everyone else will too. Thank you very much. Thank you.